Hello, this presentation is Body Extensions, an exploration into wearable sculpture. Today we are going to learn about sculpture, how sculptures relate to our bodies, and how we can make sculptures that we can wear. Let's get started. What is a sculpture? A sculpture is a form made by an artist. It is usually three-dimensional, meaning it is usually a physical object that we can walk around and look at from all sides. When we first see a sculpture, we contemplate the sculpture's size. Is it bigger or smaller than me? Or is it the same size as me? Both of these sculptures, one by Rachel Harrison and the other by Alexander Calder, are both about the same size as an adult human, which directly references a body. The Alexander Calder sculpture on the right is thin and made of metal, but it seems to have a head, legs, and arms. It's like a stick figure drawing come to life. Rachel Harrison's sculpture on the left takes up the space of a person, and what is sticking out from its side? It's a selfie stick, which implies it is human-like, or a stand-in for a person. Both of these sculptures don't exactly look like they are humans. They are, in fact, quite abstract. So what is abstract or abstraction? Abstraction is not representational to the reality that we know. Representational means to represent something so it looks like something that is real to us. Something that is abstract may be an object that is like nothing we have ever seen before. To gain a clearer understanding of abstract and representational, let's go through some representational sculptures and abstract sculptures and see how they both can represent the body. Today we are capable of making incredibly convincing lifelike sculptures. This is a hyper-realistic sculpture of a man made by artist Tony Mattelli. This is so representational of us that it looks just like a human. Its realism is amazing and wows us because we question if it is an object or a person. It is also doing something that we can't do. It is defying gravity, which is even more alluring to us. Let's look at this very famous sculpture, The Thinker, by Augustus Rodin. This is not as realistic as the last sculpture, but it is portraying us more realistically by acting like us. It is sitting, not floating on its head. The sculpture is an iconic representation of humans and our ability to think. Many artists have made work in homage to this sculpture by making versions that are more in conversation with art of today. Artist Lindsay Lawson made many versions of the thinker, with each one being abstracted in a different way. They no longer look as real and are made out of some unusual materials. The figure on the left looks like it was made out of bones, wearing shoes, sunglasses, and a hat just like we would wear. The ones to the right are bumpy and fuzzy looking. They look less and less like a human, meaning less representational and more abstract, but they are still human-like. Here the artist reduces the thinker down more and more until we barely see a figure making them more abstract. This sculpture on the left is a neon squiggle, but in that squiggle we can see the outline of a figure. It's a three-dimensional line drawing of the thinker. And the sculpture on the right is a chair mimicking a person sitting down, with the arms hinting at human-like arms, while the chair's legs are placed in shoes, shoes that we would wear, and the chair is wearing them, 
which makes the chair body-like. We've talked about sculptures as objects that take up space, that they can relate to our bodies, and they, they can be representational or abstract. Representational and abstraction are equally important. Representation illustrates our world while abstraction helps us to imagine and see new things in our world. But there are a few more things to know about sculpture. We are missing two of the most important components. What is it made out of and what does it look like? We can refer to these components as materiality and aesthetics. So what does materiality and aesthetics mean? Aesthetics relates to how our senses perceive the sculpture. We determine if we think it's pretty or if we think it's ugly. And materiality is what the sculpture is made out of. When we look at a sculpture, we assess these things. Are these sculptures pleasing to look at? Are these sculptures pokey or smooth? The Constantine Brancusi sculpture on the left is very smooth, made from polished bronze, marble, and sanded wood. And the Ava Hess sculpture on the right is kind of pokey or furry, made from many plastic tubes fitted into gridded walls. We question if a sculpture is hard or soft. Both of these artworks are made by Klaus Oldenburg. On the left is a toilet which is so ridiculous because it is soft, so we would not be able to support ourselves sitting on it. And on the right is a mouse face that is hard and rectangular, which is the opposite of a mouse face which would be soft and kind of round. We question the color of artworks. If we like them, how do they make us feel? Now that we have a better understanding of sculpture, and then how could we wear a sculpture? We've learned that sculptures are objects, and all of us wear objects. Can you think of an object that you're wearing right now? Watches, backpacks, glasses, necklaces, hats, even our clothes are objects. All of these objects that we are wearing serve multiple purposes for us. Glasses help us to see, a backpack helps us to carry many things at once. Our clothes keep us warm or shield us from the sun. These are very functional things that we wear to help our bodies out. These objects make it physically easier for us to see, carry heavy weight, or even be outside. They are acting as extensions of our bodies to make it easier for us to live. However, there are other reasons why we wear these objects. Think of another reason you would wear something. Because we like them. We might think that they are pretty, or they're cool, or they're aesthetically pleasing. The things we wear can convey something about ourselves to another person, too. Here, the musician Elton John wears many different types of glasses. They might help him see, but really, he likes all of these different ones. He's wearing a pair of scissors, and then there's even ones that look like pianos. And here are many different styles of backpacks. They are pokey and colorful and look like a cat. There is even one that holds a cat. These are more than utilitarian, they are sculptural and expressive. So the things we wear can convey a message as well as have a function, just like sculpture. In this picture, this person has long sticks strapped to his body. The sticks physically extend his body in many different directions. His arms shoot out very far, and his torso pushes above his head. It is done with a minimal amount of material and does such a wonderful job of getting us to see the body moving and the direction it is going all through line. 
The Bauhaus was a German art school that opened in the early 20th century that combined crafts, the fine arts, and was famous for their approach to design. The teachers at this school were all artists, and making artwork, craft, and design was so a part of their lives that they began having elaborate costume parties where their artwork became what they wore. As you can see, these are very abstract costumes, and much more than costumes, they are sculptures. These turn the human form into crazy shapes. On the left, the torso is a gold ball. At the center, the figure looks as though it is made with two different halves, and the one at the back with the striped legs has dangly lines instead of arms that swing around when it moves. These forms emphasized the body's movements and senses. You can think of these two wearable sculptures as visual sound waves. Ligia Clark was a Brazilian artist. Her sculptures were often wearable or interactive. She wanted to emphasize our senses, and her sculptures acted as a tool to do this. In these masks, she denied the ability to use some of our senses in order to heighten others. The masks shield the viewer from seeing and sometimes hearing. And instead, the masks have herbs like cloves inside so that your experience of smell is heightened. Others had things like that rattled around so that the sound was important and others had mirrors inside to shift how you would see. This is an interactive work. The cuff that they wear forms a connection between the people, so the participants pay attention to their movements. They have to work together to make the sculpture work, and they are a part of the sculpture. These are mirrored spectacles, the people are looking at each other while looking at themselves in the mirror and the spaces behind them. This shifts their sense of perception. Ligia Clark really wanted the audience, meaning you and I, to become a part of the artwork. As participants, we can engage with the work through actual tactile sensation touching rather than just looking, which is more like the way we live. We use all of our senses to understand and move through the world. This one is interactive and wearable. It relies on the people with their bodies making the sculpture work. Nick Cave is an American artist working today. These are his sound suits. They are called sound suits because the first one he made was made out of sticks, and when he moved, it made an amazing sound that was amplified inside of the suit. These ones are made from fabric and sequins, fake fur, and vintage toys. As an African-American man, he wanted to make a suit that represented a thick skin making a wearable sculpture that made race, gender, and class not a concern. Everyone is equal wearing these suits. Instead of focusing on the person inside of the suit, we think about the suit, what they are made out of, how they move, and what sounds do they make. These are made from sticks, fake flowers, and many, many, many buttons. Now that we have learned about wearable sculptures, you can make your own. We are going to free ourselves to merge sculpture and wearable objects together, letting ourselves experiment with what we want to wear. We will use pipe cleaners to make sculptures that fit to our bodies and extend our bodies in some way, maybe physically aid us, convey a meaning, or even connect us. This right here is a thinking cap. When I wear it, it shows that my mind is working. And these are my tunnel vision glasses. 
Let's start with some basics on how to use pipe cleaners. First, cross two pipe cleaners near the ends together. Bend one over the other, then bend the other pipe cleaner over that one. Keep bending and twisting them together so they stick to each other and make a very long pipe cleaner. Now that we've learned how to attach them, you can keep adding pipe cleaners to make them even longer. Here I've made a circle that is big enough to fit on my head with three pipe cleaners. Wrap the pipe cleaners around your head to measure. Keep holding them together while you remove the pipe cleaners from your head. Then you can twist the ends together to make a hat or a crown. These students have awesome examples of hats and crowns. You can also take a pipe cleaner and wrap it around your finger to make a ring. If you keep wrapping it around your finger, you can make curly cues like this student on the left. And this student on the right has curly cues coming up from her head and she wears glasses. Here are some more examples of the fun students had making their own wearable sculptures. The person on the left has an extended nose, and the person on the right has many flowers in her hair. This student has multiple colorful eyes, and these students have glasses, a bouncy crown, and a whole arm bracelet. This student made her own thinking cap, and the boy on the right has an extended jaw. This student on the left has tall eyes that extend to his hair, and the student on the right has made a hat that makes her taller, extending her height. There are so many inventive sculptures that you can make to wear. Thanks for joining me, and have fun making sculptures.